So I'm not a political scientist. Yeah. I'm a hardcore engineer by training. Yeah, digital engineer. Yeah. The very first generation of digital engineers back in the late sixties. And uh, and entrepreneur now. So a little bit of history, yeah, yeah, about corruption. I grew up in India in fifties and corruption in fifties was unbelievable. It was you could not get anything. Railway ticket. You couldn't even buy a bicycle without somebody's signing off. Your scooter took about three years. Airline ticket, forget it. A Russian card, you had to know somebody. You had to know somebody. And I was the the older child in the family who had to do, you know, do these things for my mom. You know, to the fuel we used was troll and and as the troll train came, you had to go to station to get your share of the troll, but you had to have a permit. And to get a permit, you had to go a week early you know, to the city hall and stand in a mile long line, a whole day affair. Went, if you, my father was in the army, he was posted on, on the border, and he would uh, give us the signed check so we could get the money, you know, his salary drawn from the bank on January, I mean, first of the month. That was a whole day affair. To get 200 rupees out of the bank was a whole day affair. You know, you had to go to the bank in the morning, and, you know, turn in your chat, wait for your name to be told, then they will give you a token. You know, when your name was told, then you had to wait with that token for two, three hours, but cash will give you 200 rupees. So life was very miserable and was very tough. You know, you could speed up the process by giving one rupee here, two rupee there, but we didn't have one rupee or two rupee to spare back then. So but I, I have been in the U.S. since 67, and I had totally disengaged from India for 28 years. You know, and uh, 95, I went back. You know, I used to go back for family visits, but 98, I went back. I mean, 95, I went back you know, to start up in days you know, with, with uh, my alma mater. But in 98, when Bajpayee became prime minister, I heard him speak, you know, which was in one of the speeches, he said, IT is India's tomorrow. And he went on to talk about, you know, by that time IT had started to become something, yeah, yeah, yeah novel in India. India was starting to export about, uh, if I remember right, about 300 million, 400 million dollars worth of IT products, IT services, you know, by 98. So I was very impressed. So I went to see Prime Minister Bajpayee. And I said, you know, IT is India's tomorrow, but what you have here is a third rate, third world, infrastructure, you know, tight term infrastructure. You need to do something about this thing, you know. If, if IT is your future, you have to do something. And uh, Bajpayee, you yeah, he was a man of very few words. And in Hindi he told me, yeah, tell me what we should do. And then I was ushered out of his office by his, uh, you know, his assistant and he told me, yeah, yeah, why don't you make some recommendations uh, for Prime Minister? So I came back to US. I assembled a group of experts at Stanford University and uh, under CEPR, and we said we need to come up with a recommendation for in Indian government you know, for the IT. We spent about a year. We did several seminars. We brought lots of experts. We brought experts from India, you know, bureaucrats, and even the minister of the of India. A year later, we made recommendations what India should do, you know, liberalize the telecom sector, privatize it. You know, turn it over to the to the to the private operators, and the main determination we made was don't sell licenses, do not sell licenses. That's a source of corruption. You know, and you take away the uh, potential capital that people have to invest, and and you know, and there's a you know, rent sitting behavior. Do a revenue share. You know, seven percent revenue share. Anybody and everybody can get a license. And prime ministers. Uh, a little bit of uh, trouble there, but Prime Minister very quickly adopted our recommendations fully, without any change whatsoever. And the new policy went into effect on January 1st, 2001, if I remember right. You know, that date you know, is etched in my mind. There were 17 million landlines in India, and one million cell phones already worked in India on that date. By the end of 2001, there were 87 million mobile phones in India, and 
70 million landlines. There was no no more landlines were added, and now here, yeah, now yeah, yeah, 15 years later, you know, we have close to billion active landlines in I mean active mobile phones in India, and last number I checked. And I, uh, I don't have a most recent number, you know, close to about 40 million landlines. So you can see uh, landlines uh, doubled, you know, from 17 to 40, but, but what happened in 2004? You know, so India had become by 2004 very dynamic, you know, IT, I mean, telephone, telecom infrastructure, one of the cheapest you know, in the world, you know, and growing very nicely, you know, so, you know and, uh, but, there was no money made made by politicians and bureaucrats. You know, if you remember right, so 2004, the government, you know, the old government comes, and they blame the BJP for giving away the spectrum free to profit makers. You know, government's assets have been driven up. We need to do, you know, sell the licenses, and we know what happened after that. But you know, 2G stamp, 3G stamp. You know, you know, all the products stopped. You know, the huge amount of money that made by people just getting the licenses, and uh, so corruption is there. Yeah, you know, the Congress Party was expert at it, and uh, yeah, I think yeah, you know, the, the digital process. You know, if you follow simple rules, you know, where you don't have property rights in things, because if somebody can sign off on a thing, you know, you know, you have fought the corruption very quickly. Anytime somebody has a power to sign and give you something, then you know, rent sitting behavior is built in. It's built in. You know, yeah, bureaucrat says, if I sign off on this thing, you know, this guy is going to make $100 million, it was the harm in me getting 10 out of that one. And that is at the heart of, 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 uh, of corruption. Digital technology you know, that can bypass all this stuff very quickly. You know, it's just you know, let you know. Yeah, you know, when I go to India now, I don't see any interruption at all compared to when I used to go to India in '90s and '70s and '80s. You know, I mean, as late as '93, uh, I was in. Yeah, you know, I was in a hotel in uh, in Delhi owned by Government of India, Hotel Akbar. Yeah, I'm here with my American wife and my young kids. I mean, this is I'm sorry, '83. With my young kids, I have I'm paying you know, back then you know about fifteen hundred rupees a day. Back then, that was a lot of money for India, and I had a room reserved for one week. And I'm told, sir, you have to vacate your room two days into my seven day stay. Why? The VIPs have <laughs> taken over this hotel. I have paid. I have room. He says, sir, you have to leave now. And they threw me out. They threw me out. And uh, you know, it was really embarrassing because I could not get a room in Delhi for anything you know, for, uh, of the quality I wanted. And I had to finally tell some distant relatives you know, to put, put me up. And I was trying to fly, you know, and I went to the airline and notated today, tomorrow notated, day after notated. And then he says, May is notated for you any day. I'm looking at it. It's an airline. I'm paying, and and then somebody says, "Yeah, go and talk to this guy, and he he may have something else for you." And first thing he says, thousand rupees. So so I think interruption has been there because somebody had right, and they just stairs. You know, thing. what we have in India now is a basis of moving forward on it, on uh, digital technology. Billion people have telephones. They they have seen you know what the future is like. And Modi's government and BJP government is a lot more savvy about these things. They are trying very hard. You know, they are saying a lot more than they are doing, but they are trying very, very hard. You know, the Jandhan Yojana, you know, under which, uh, if I remember right, yeah, very last the population has been now doing the bank account for the first time. And uh, yeah, I, I met yeah, Prime Minister about two weeks, uh, about a month ago in Delhi. He, you know, he was saying that uh, 20,000 crore you know, of, rupi, you know, of investment, uh, not investment, savings have been made by these people. They were given 50 ru rupees or 100 rupees free by the government you know, into their accounts, but they have you know, uh, deposited their own cash on top of you know, what they were driven. And uh, you know, it's, it bypasses almost everything. Adhar, you know, if it's used properly. By the way, Congress Party did do Adhar. 
but they didn't adopt it. You know, I mean, the different ministries fought. You know, the, 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 the home ministry fought you know, it, you know, tooth and nails because you know, they thought they would lose control of everything. And you know, the people who did Aadhaar are, are my friends you know, from here in the valley, you know, you know, my old IIT you know, buddies. You know, they were very you know, frustrated because they, they were really passionate about it and they spent, you know, people left their jobs here and, and their families here to, you know, to just spend a year in India to do the Aadhaar. And at the end, they felt very, very cheated you know, because you know, Dorman didn't, you know, didn't adopt it. Uh, Modi government has, you know, to its credit, uh, has adopted Aadhaar fully. And I think there was a bill this week in parliament. It was passed by Lord Sabha already, was you know, sent to Rajasabha, I think, either yesterday or the day before. And, you know, if that gets you know, through, you know, Congress party is fighting it, and then I was told by somebody yesterday. But, uh, you know, it will empower people, you know, with RTI and all that. M my, my sense is, uh, it's moving in the right direction. You know, the digital technology has a dark side. You know, you know, you see in China, you know, they can blot, but digital you know, technology also has a very, you know, yeah, it's very hard to control, as we already know. Uh, you know, it also has a very bright side. And uh, in India, given the, you know, you know, where we are, you know, given the expertise, you know, very broad-based expertise in India now, you know, in digital technology, you know, I think you know, there is a good basis to uh, speed up the things. You know, especially on the corruption front, you know, if you can bypass things you know, where nobody's signature is required to assert your rights or you know, that your rights exercise, you know, you know, the red sitting will start to disappear. Thank you.